Hi folks, so welcome back for the second part and looks like there is a slightly change of plan because meanwhile I was recording the first part I just thought uh, of a way another way to compute um, sorry, another way to compute the, uh, way, the value of the offset branchless, right? and turns out, turns out to be much simpler and 10 percent quicker of my best implementation so let's actually let it run again so it's branches with no AVX it's pure pod data whatever crunching number and I tested it it yields the right result and it's much quicker so surprise but I'm still going with the usual order alright so the first one we're going to check is the offset UV no branch number one so what's the idea behind this all right so my idea was coming from um, the way you try to optimize branches on the gpu or actually like cuda optimize branches or you, you do it in the shaders for example right where basically uh, when you have simple branches you just compute both of them and then you just mask out the value that you want, right? So thinking about how I could mask this value, right? I was kind of fixed on a mask. I want to use a mask. So I just thought, all right, what if I use AVX, right? I compute all three different paths at once, right? And then I use a mask to select the values in the registers that I want to use, right? And that turns out to be not so trivial right and as you can see from the benchmark it, it's quicker right but probably the effort is not worth it since there is a much easier way but we're going to see that later i don't want to spoil it to you right so the simple 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 way to do it in abx right with, with the abx idea is basically to use a permute var right permute var um, basically takes in a register, takes in a mask, right? And this mask basically just has IDs in how to shuffle basically the values around uh, so you can get what you want. Basically what I want, once I know which value I want to get, I want to move those two values wherever they are into the lowest part of the register so when I'm going to store those values, I'm just grabbing the lowest two, so index zero, index one, and storing them in the output memory. All right, so that's the idea behind it. So everything works around the permute var instruction, right? So we can actually see it here, right? Um, so moves element, shuffle elements across lanes, meaning across different slots in the register so lanes in this register which uh, 256 bits register so we can fit eight floats in there into the corresponding index which is provided by the mask right so basically this is the index so how do you actually build this mask right and how do you compute the values that you are going to mask? So let's go in order. First of all, you need to get the values into the register. And I want to fit six UV into the register, right? So, but the thing is, I only have two, right? So I just have UV like that going right to left. And what I want to get in the register is this, right? And actually, I don't care about the last two. They can be zero, they can be whatever. I'm not going to initialize that. I don't really care, right? So I want to load this up. How can I do that? Well, you can do that with the broadcast, right? Problem with the broadcast, at least from this instruction I could find, is that it only copies um, a single values, a single value, right? Uh, so if you want to copy a single precision, um, it will copy that into the register and that's about it right and also like um, 
it will copy just in the low in the if your two floats in the lowest part in the register in the higher part of the register some stuff like that so that's not really what I wanted I wanted to copy U and D so what I decided to do is to trick the compiler in believing hey uh, this UV is a single 64 bit value right so basically I'm casting the pointer to be a double and a using function a load uh, double function right so it's loading 64 bit which is reading the memory for two 32 bit values right so once i have it i'm going to broadcast these 64 bit values uh, across the register right and this will effectively give me the buvu pattern i want because it's copying 64 bit at a time which doesn't make sense read as a 64-bit value but it does make sense read 32-bit at the time and a register doesn't really care all right it's just bits so that's why it works and we can actually look the instruction right so broadcast pd right so this is the instruction so it takes 128 register meaning to um uh, sorry, um, sorry. You can fit two doubles in it, but only basically it's only only going to broadcast the first one if I'm correct. Oh, actually, two packet doubles. Sorry, and it broadcasts to all to all the elements, right? So and returning on 256. So basically, it's giving me the result I actually want. So this is all good and dandy. So we loaded the, the value in memory. So we are good. Uh, we have the value we want. Uh, nice. So once we have that, right? So we broadcast the register. We have the correct data we want. Um, we need to load the values we want to add to it, right? So basically, if you see here, for the first branch, we were adding an offset, subtracting half the offset, uh, adding another, uh, subtracting the offset, adding the offset. This kind of thing. So we are both adding and subtracting, that's not good. So what they decided to do, I declare another constant, right? UV offset half and called AVX, which basically is negated. So if I negate a negative, uh, sorry, if I subtract a ne negative number, it's just basically adding it. So I transform a mix of subtraction and, ad and addition in all addition, and that's AVX likes it, so I can just call an add instruction and be done with it. And what I did was building a const uh, float buffer with basically changing, copying the values here, right? So you see, first one I have UV offset, then UV offset half, which is AVX, then half again, UV offset again. So basically just copy that and set the last two values to zero. So I'm going to load this and I'm going to call add. All right. So add will add those two. Basically I'm computing all three branches at once. And that's all good. I'm um, just calling a cast here to basically uh, convert from uh, a double register to a float register, right? So, but as I said, the CPU doesn't care. It just sees a single register with bits in it. So basically this instruction boils down to a no op. It's just for the compiler to know what you're doing, basically, to make the function signature to work. So after I added this, I called that, uh, I called this register to be masked. So um, basically in the first two, um, so it's going to be a reverse. So it's A, B, C, uh, D, E, F, and then zero, 0, So reading again right to left. The first two values are the UV value result from the first branch. C and D are the values from the second branch. And E and F are the value from the third branch. So I just need to select what I want. So first of all, I compute the W value, and then I just recompute the usual um, so I recompute the usual um, um, the usual com comparison, right? So basically, by doing U less than V 
and u less than w, I know that basically if u is the, minor, the, the lowest values, right? And I do that for v and w, so basically I know which one is the lowest. Now we start to get uh, a little bit more into the tricky bits. So permute var, right, basically wants a full 256 bit register, float register. So basically mean I need eight floats, right? And each floats represent a number between zero and seven. And this value between zero and seven is going to tell basically which index you want. So let's say that you have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so those are 6, and then you have 6 and 3. Oops. So it means it's going to grab the third index in the register you give and plus it, place it into the first slot into the, the resulting register, and then the sixth value, sorry, in this case the seventh value, into the source register and store into the destination register. So that's how it works. So we just need to build this mask. So what I did, I allocated eight floats on the stack, fine, uh, sorry, eight integers on the stack. Then in the first index, I want the first value, basically the U value from the branch. And we know that the U is basically going is into the U v u v u right so either in the zero index second index and fourth index sorry fifth index my bad all right so if i'm not doing anything right so basically if i want the first one i just need to have zero right and the trick here here is basically I'm going to add all together the indices I want but multiplying that by the condition so only one of these conditions will evaluate to true so basically only giving me either 0, 3 or 5 and then since the V is basically the, most, the, the left element to the U I just need to add one to the value just computed that's how you build the mask so let's give an example I want to grab uh, the first U, right? Uh, both is V and is W, right? Are going to boil down to zero. So I get zero. Zero plus zero equals zero. Actually, is U is not even needed in this case. And V is going to be one. So instead of is V, I'm going to get three times one is equal three and five times zero equals zero. So three plus zero is equal three. That's how the trick works. So I have my mask, I'm going to load the mask, um, so I'm casting to the data type uh, that the load instruction expect, fine. So I have in the register the shuffle mask, that's how I call it. And then I just call permute, and is, is shuffle, in res, in res I have the shuffle value that I want. Next, I just need to copy the, the two lowest values in. I don't want to copy all the eight values because I don't know what memory I have at the third index of this pointer because might be memory not allocated for me or other memory that the user need, right? So I cannot copy eight values, six extra values because I don't know what I'm going to override. That's why I'm doing a store with a mask. And the mask is super simple, it's constant, so it's a car as a constant, right? And basically just say I want, oops, sorry, index 0 and index 1, right? So that's how it works. As simple as that. And, sorry, no branch 1. And you perform the store, you're going to store in offset view, which is basically our output, and you're done. Right, and this should boil down to no branches. Let's have a quick look using Godbolt, right? So we have offset no branch one. And this is the actual code we get out, and you see there are no branches, right? So that's exactly what we want. It's a bit faster, it's not ridiculously faster because all this loading into the AVX register uh, 
takes its time. And also, I'm really not using AVX in the way it likes to, right? All this shuffling, loading, masking, it's not really how AVX likes to work. Ideally, AVX would like to run this function, where is it? Uh, on eight UVs coupled, for example, right? So I perform the same operation on eight U and V at the time. That's how it should be. And actually, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, Rob Bateman, uh, which is basically the guy behind Rob the Block, uh, gave me an implementation of that. So I will show it to you uh, at the end of the tutorial. All right. But that's basically, uh, oops, I should probably remove that. Let's just make sure, uh, sorry, it still compiles and it doesn't, oh, actually, sorry, actually did need uh, is you because I need that to compute the, the, the W. So is you, B, and U and W. You probably guys saw that and started laughing like crazy. All right, so we're running again. And one thing is true that we are not getting branches, but you need to be really careful, right? So my first implementation was with the logic end, all right? And if you check, the logic end spits out branches. And it was scratching my end. It was like, why? Why am I getting branches? I don't have any single branch here, right? And again, thanks to Rob help, uh, we figure it out. And this is basically, right? Um, the C++ standard coming back and biting your ass, right? And is, this is the second branch instruction because this kind of uh, multiple chain uh, logical operation uh, are short circuit, right? Uh, meaning that, so here we are doing an AND. So you know that AND only return true if both operands are true, right? So in this case, I'm using one. So that's the only time it returns true. So if for any reason you evaluate the first operand and it's false, doesn't matter which value is the second operand, you're gonna get false. So it's trying to optimize and short circuit the operation. And so evaluates the first one, it set that basically um, a jump instruction, which is basically an if. And, uh, and checking, you know, um, if it's below or equal, I don't, need to com I don't need to compute the rest, meaning if it's negative, uh, I'm going to get out, right? I'm jumping here 28 and do whatever I need to do, right? So I jump here to 28, then back to 18. So basically skipping all this, all right? So you need to be careful bitwise and doesn't uh, have this behavior so you need to use the bitwise and and this works because uh, the less operator returns a boolean so uh, doing bitwise operation a boolean still yields basically the same result of the logical boolean operator all right so be careful about that next uh, we are going to check the second version that i wrote which use BMI, and we're going to see later what it is. It's a lot more complex, yields better results, right? And that's until uh, 30 minutes ago was my best implementation until uh, I just find another ways to do it and it will be much simpler. But we're going to see that in the next tutorial, in the next part of the tutorial. See ya, guys.